we are home. Had a good day with Marissa and baby girl. We're home. See the new lot on the barn. The new lot's in the barn. Coming in real handy. It's time to get these boxes unloaded here. Got to get this, this pusher off the back or this panel off the back that uh, the gentleman gave to me. So I'm going to get this off and we're going to back up here to the corner and they're going to run through here. And we'll get them unloaded. Hey, did you just wake up? Huh? Been a good girl. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. I wanted to introduce the new three members of the Cross Timbers Bison herd right here. Of course, the highlight of them all, as you saw in my last video, is Big Joe. Big Joe, we're, one of the reasons that we went after these animals when we had the opportunity we did, is to how gentle they were. You can tell how, how, how nice Joe is and how calm they are when we brought them home. Of course, they're a little stirred up. We brought them home at night. I didn't want to bring them home at night, but it was uh, we had a long day. Of course, Big Joe here didn't want to leave Carrier, Oklahoma, uh, but we finally got him loaded up. You, you really don't want to push these animals too much, but we were able to get him loaded up uh, to bring him home, and uh, we finally got him. But we made it safe, and we got home. And everything was great and we let him out so big joe so far doing great he flipped over a couple of water troughs so i had to update and get a bigger water trough but joe's doing good and he already loves his cubes already he is a big guy so let me introduce you to the rest of the herd. Here, I'm just going off the names. I don't think we should change them from the original owners. This is Kit. She's kind of feisty. She's the feisty one of, of, the, of the three. She's uh, kind of reminds me of Bell Star, or she kind of reminds me of Quapaw, maybe the queen bee of this group. But this is Kit. She's shaking her head at me. She's five and a half years old. And then you have Flo here. She's kind of like the Eleanor of the group she's she's pretty nice she's pretty gentle and that's uh that's good to have a uh one uh, a bison like like uh eleanor these cows flo and kit they've also produced uh i think they've had three calves so that kind of gives you the age they're five and a half so they've been bred every year that they've been able to be bred remember bison can't breed until they're two years old so they've had at least three babies which is awesome and so we're just gonna try to keep that going so big joe here pretty gentle big old guy which is good that's what we want here we don't want a bunch of crazy animals because that's what uh, can happen whenever you buy them from different places but luckily these people um, did what I'm doing right now. They did a lot of hand feeding them. They spent a lot of time with them and uh, that helps us out. Now the bad part about Big Joe and Kit and Flo is they've never been through a squeeze chute. So this year will be the first year that they'll run through a squeeze chute and it should be pretty interesting. Needless to say, considering they've never been in a squeeze chute. Our, uh, this is just a little tip for uh, bison beginners, is whenever you bring new animals home, no matter where they're from, we're lucky here because these animals have had 
um, a couple around them that had some people around them almost every single day. And the bison get used to that. And so that's a big deal to us. You know, if you get bison from maybe Yellowstone or Custer State Park, big places like that where they hardly ever see people um, or on these big ranches, you could run into some problems because these animals, they're wild and they're crazy. But if you've got some that are used to people, that's a, that's a good start. Know where your bison are coming from. If you go to the sale or go visit a bison ranch and because you're, you're looking at buying some, look at their body language and you can tell real quick if they're kind of crazy or not. Bison all have a little crazy in them, but you can see here how calm these guys are. And since we brought them home, how calm they were. Number two tip is bring them in here and don't just throw them out in your pasture. Don't just put them out there and let them go because they're going to test you. They're going to test every corner of your property and they're going to, there's chances that they could run through your fence depending on how crazy they are. I don't think these three would run through a fence, but I do know that um, because these animals were handled for a while, an easy transition, hopefully. Bring them home and put them in your corral. I've had a lot of bison producers reach out to me um, talking about putting bison or buying bison but they don't have a corral system guys you got to have a corral system you got to have something nice heavy and sturdy now this is brand new we have a six foot top rail here and then we bought these pre-made panels like we used on this side if you watch one of my videos I showed you how we put those together hey and we have a six bar panel here it's probably a a foot off the ground I mean, this is tough, even for this giant bull here. Look out, a little skittish still. Even for this giant bull, you still got these panels and he's not getting through it and he's not getting over it. So when you bring these animals home, put them somewhere safe where if they are a little crazy and they can come somewhere where you're not having to worry about their fencing, you can put them in something like this and it'll be great. Let them get habituated. Let them establish a new environment, a new system, new bison, a new place. Let them get used to it. And you can do that by just putting them in your corral. So what's our next step with these bison? Guys, what we're gonna do is because we have two bulls on this property, here's the other herd. They're wanting some cubes too. They're a little jealous right now. Because we have two bulls, we can't have them touching noses from fence to fence. So if Dunbar was here, as long as they're able to touch noses, I don't think Dunbar would go through this, but they would test each other. Now, if you've got them on some barbed wire fence and you've got Dunbar on one side and Big Joe on the other, you're gonna have some issues, especially during breeding season. One of the things is we have our herd and we have a herd of a size 13 right now, but that's not, really big enough uh, to have two bulls if we had a 25 or 30 or even 40 breeding females we could have two bulls on a bigger place but we don't really have that availability right now and we don't have that many breeding females so we're just going to keep them separated but here's the good thing is we've got another breeding bull now and so that what we can do is take some of our original herd our large herd new babies the new calves or some heifers and we can switch off and see what big joe can do with them so big joe have some opportunities to to have some new women he's had kit and flow for a while now but at some time uh, joe will have an opportunity to breed some new females hey big dog Dunbar, he's a, he's wondering what's going on. He's come up to the fence right here. This is part of our new corral system. Dunbar's came up there and checked it out. And a lot of you guys are probably asking about him. See how he's doing. He's uh, he's doing pretty good. We're not getting rid of Dunbar. I promise you. Dunbar is gonna be our guy still. So, so if you guys are wondering, Dunbar is three and a half years old he is not as big 
as Big Joe right there. Dunbar is, like I said, is only three and a half years old. And uh, he still has a ways to go that he can reach uh, full maturity at five to six years old. And so that's kind of where we're at with, with Dunbar. He's a bit of a darker bison, which we like that about him. <clears throat> we're not changing anything with Dunbar. He's always going to be here with us. So this is part of our new corral system that we built. We have, this is our one of our long stretches. We built this fence back in the spring and then we finally finished it here all the way down. So when we brought the three new ones home, we put them right here in this holding area. And so there's a gap here in between where the rest of the, the herd is. We just don't want them touching noses because we, we could face some issues with them touching noses. <laughs> You're still the boss, aren't you? Yeah. So I know a lot of you ask, what are we going to do with these three? We're not going to really change a whole lot. We're going to keep these in here together for a while. And what we're going to do is do some fence building. We've got to do a little bit of work on the property as far as the vision of uh, some fence lines or some pastures that we're gonna divide up and get ready for pasture rotations, which has been one of my goals. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna divide some pastures up so that once these guys have really established their new home, we will get them on some grass. Uh, that's important to us. The grass is going into uh, dormant right now. Kevin already had them a bale of hay ready um, before they even got home, which is awesome. We appreciate Kevin doing that make them feel at home as soon as they got here. Right now, we just wanna make sure that they're healthy and that they're feeling at home, which I think everything is going pretty well right now. And they're feeling at home, they're fed and they're watered and that's what they want. They wanna just keep them happy, guys. You, you, you love and care for these animals and uh, they'll respect you back and they know it. So really excited about Big Joe and Flo and Kit to join the new herd and we'll we'll do some breeding talks later about what we're going to do with big joe and dunbar as well so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video and i uh, just wanted to give you an update on the new additions to the herd got some exciting stuff still happening i'm going to sell my first two yearling bulls at the sale and Perkins at the Oklahoma Bison Association sale and we'll see how that goes and I'm going to bring you along on that journey as well so stay tuned for some upcoming videos of me actually putting my first two bison in the sale for me to ever sell bison and then also the sale process I've done a sale process before of our sale a couple years ago this year I want to do another video over the sale process. We're at a different facility up in Perkins, Oklahoma. So if you're a new beginner, number one, have a good corral system so you can actually work your animals. Have something that when you bring new animals home that are maybe not like these calmer bison or if you bring them home no matter what, have something you can work them. Have a place that you can bring them home and let them habituate to their new environment and to their new home. Number two, don't just let them out in the pasture. Put them in something like this so they can slowly adapt to your new system, the new smells, and all those things that the bison have to get used to. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for uh, watching this whole story and this process of Cross Timbers Bison. Guys, it's been a fun adventure. Um, been doing this for three years, been on YouTube for over a year now, and it's been a lot of fun. And I, I really enjoy bringing you guys along, um, raising the American bison. You can follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram. I'll keep you updated on Big Joe and his two ladies, and still the rest of the herd. 
and be uh, be watching for the uh, videos from the sale up in Perkins, Oklahoma. Thank you guys for watching. Nobody's forgot about you, I promise, big guy. We still love you. Promise. Hey guys, I also want to thank Alvar and Gula. I want to thank him for letting me borrow his trailer. Um, anytime I need to borrow equipment, he lets me borrow his equipment. And he let me use his um, nice trailer to go get these bison up in Enid. Gula Farms. This guy's been raising goats. He's been doing it a long time for a lot of people did around my area. Great guy, great family. Very appreciative. Thank you, Alvar and Gula, for letting me use your trailer.